and welcome to Forest Lake here in France. It's been crazy since we've arrived. Uh, videoing has been kind of just been not happening so I'll tell you what's happened. So we arrived, uh, flew into Bergerac Airport. We're at the south of France so we thought it would be easier to fly. It's me and my dad, my dad's first time here in France and it's my third time. It's also my third time back at Forest Lake here. And everything was fine. We'd already arranged, planned not to get our rods out on the Saturday night because by the time you get here and uh, get unpacked, get sorted, you're talking early evening if your flight time was, was like ours. So we decided to just enjoy the night, relax, we stayed up at the lodge, which is about a couple of hundred metres walk from the lake itself. And um, we just had a drink. So that was that. We were both really looking forward to getting the rods out on the Sunday. But we, we knew that there was a heat wave coming, which I'm sure by now you'll be well aware of it. So it's the middle of July and it was due to get up to 40 degrees on the Sunday and up to about 44 on the Monday. It's now Wednesday and this is literally the first time I'm talking into the camera. So it was crazy hot on the Sunday morning when we were down at the lake getting sorted. We were going out in the boat and um, having a look at some depths and features and seeing where we fancy placing our rigs but we were already starting to suffer by 10 a.m., something like that. It was hot. So we managed to get our rods out. We were just um, staying in the shade and even then we were really struggling and uh, it was tough going. So Sunday passed um, and it was uneventful fishing wise, which I'm not surprised. Um, and that was that. Monday morning came and it was even hotter. It was unbearable. So we suffered. Um, we were fishing towards the far bank, which is a damn wall. There's a lot of overhanging branches and a bit of a snaggy area. Now when I've came here previously, I've done quite well fishing in that area, but we started off with most of our rods sort of over that side. Um, I had some over to the other side of the lake where it was shallow, some li lily pads, I was sort of targeting them. So I had two rods in really shallow water, one rod over towards the snags, and my dad, he was fishing pretty much all over to the snags and 
we noticed that in mid water, in, in the open water, there were signs of uh, fish feeding. So on Monday, while it was ridiculously hot, we decided to have a change of tactic and we, we went all out in the open water. So what we were meant to be doing while we're here, and we have done today for the first time, is um, we got a hire car so that we can go out for a couple of hours to break the day up. So what the plan was was midday, every day, get showered and changed and uh, go and see something a bit different. So we've done that today for the first time, but apart from today it's been too hot to even consider doing anything. So like I say, it's been difficult. It's been difficult for me to try and video this. Um, and I'll go back to Monday. So we changed tactic, started fishing in the open water and we got our first bite on the afternoon in the heat of the day and it was a 33 pound common so that was good to see a fish on the bank um, even though it was unbearably hot so I took a short video and got a few pictures of that fish and then my camera which is a Canon 90D which is a decent camera uh, gave me a warning saying that the internal temperature was too high so that tells you how hot it's been so I was really saving my camera just for in case we got any fish so I've got footage of the fish and that was about it I wasn't really able to give any updates and uh, and do anything like that so I'm gonna have to play around with the editing of this video to make it look half decent if you're wondering why I keep on having to lean forward, it's because I'm getting bit. <laughs> the insects have been quite um, bad since we've been here. I highly recommend you take some insect repellent. We have brought some with us, but it's not 100% working. It's more like 50%. So, um, but yeah, it's been it's been it's been a difficult start, but things are starting to come together now. The weather is calming down. So Monday afternoon we had that one one common. Um, so me and my dad were sharing rods and that first fish my dad actually wasn't feeling too well with, with the heat. He he'd just gone for a lie down in the bivy. So he said if any of the rods go for me to just take it. So if it had been ten minutes earlier, that would have been his first fish, but never mind. We've had four fish in total. Um, it's Wednesday afternoon, so we had the 33 common on the Monday afternoon. Um, and then yesterday, what did we have yesterday? We had a mirror, 37 pound, good fish. And then today we've had a common and a mirror. I think the common was 29, and the mirror was 31. Yeah, that sounds about right. So things are starting to come good. Temperatures come down a lot now. It's now, today is about 32, a lot more comfortable. Um, you think that's probably unbearable back at home in the UK, but from what we've been enduring, it feels quite cool. So I think the fish are going to start feeling a bit better now, now that it's calmed down a little bit. And um, yeah, we're going to try and just uh, do our best. Um, hopefully we'll get a couple more fish on the bank today. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just carry on enjoying ourselves. So we are enjoying it and especially now that the temperature's come down, it's a lot more bearable. Um, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it's looking good. We've had a slight change of tactic as well, rig-wise. Um, before we arrived, um, a Facebook post mentioned that there's been crayfish in this lake and they've been bothering some people. So I went all out attack on the anti like anti crayfish. I just thought let's let's use some spinner rigs and uh, plastic baits just so I'm not getting bothered and um, we caught two fish on, on them 
but um, this morning we had obviously six rods out and one of them rods had a bottom bait boilie on just straight out the bag and um, that had both of this morning's fish which has made us change tactic a little bit we've took off all the spinner rigs we've put multi rigs on and we've just shot bottom bait boilies out and see if that helps us get any more on the bank I think it might make a slight difference but we'll see time will tell um, so yeah I'll leave you to it I'm gonna carry on getting bit and hopefully we'll get a fish on the bank Later that day, once we'd returned to the lake, we had three further fish. I had a 16 pound common. My dad then had a 15 pound common. And then I had a 21 pound, very long, hard fighting common. Thursday morning about somewhere around 11 uh, yeah it's been another good morning um, we've got all the rods out about just after 7 um, I wound my rods in last night I really wanted a good night to sleep so I was quite happy with how yesterday went we had five fishing total yesterday so yeah I thought I'm gonna have a good night to sleep and then be fresh for today so I think that was a good a, a good thing that what I've done because you've got to remember you are on holiday so you don't want to be just absolutely you know tired out all the time so I had a good drink last night um, as I like to so yeah um, we got our rods out just after seven this morning and it was quiet we um, we got a fish at about half nine which tends to be roughly uh, bite time at this the, on this trip um, so I can't remember off the top of my head what it was um, but I've wrote them all down so I'll, I'll go over it um, but yeah so I had one and then shortly after that we had another one um, and then I've just had another one so the last fish was the biggest of the three it was a 31 mirror and I was playing it just as Terry the owner was bringing out breakfast so I got it unhooked, got it quickly weighed and then I put it back out in the retainer in deep water while we finished our breakfast. Um, I then got my rod straight back out because I could see there was still feeding over that spot. So the fish had been in the retainer for about 20 minutes so it, it obviously it had fully recovered, full of energy like myself and uh, when I went to take the photos do a bit of video jumped out my hands so that's the last of that fish never mind it's not like it was my biggest so but yeah it was a 31 mirror and it fought really well I thought it was gonna be bigger than what it was um, probably the best fighting fish so far of the week um, took me all over so really enjoyed that um, so that's where we're at so we're on 
nine fish so far for the week. Um, I think there's still a chance yet that we could get one in the next hour or so. We're going to wind in around midday, get showered, get some clean clothes on again, and we're going to go out for a couple of hours, like we did yesterday. Go see a bit of uh, France. <laughs> I don't know where we're going, they all sound uh, strange names out here. So yeah, we're going to go to some scenic town. Um, that'll kill a couple of hours. It'll take our minds off the of fishing, uh, which we enjoyed yesterday. And then it was good to come back, feeling fresh and motivated to give it another go. So yesterday, when we came back from the place we'd been, I think we had another four fish. We had a few on the afternoon then, the last fish was at about seven-ish. So yeah, for anyone who's who's coming out here, for us personally, I'll tell you what's been working. Um, open water, in a nutshell. You can see uh, signs of fish feeding, bubbles coming up in areas, and just try and target those areas if you see bubbles coming up especially on a morning just we've been using the rowing boat so my dad he'll hold the rod bail arm open I'll go out in the rowing boat drop a rig on that spot a couple of handfuls of boilie and pellet that's all we're doing um, and we're just spreading the rods out so six rods just out roughly in a line I would say roughly halfway out in the lake so pretty close in to be fair um, but it's working for us so we decided before we started fishing that we we're just going to take it in turns we we're going to share rods take it in turns and just it'll even out how many we how many we both catch to make it fair my advice personally would be to just go boily approach um, just boily fishing on the bottom um, we don't seem to be having any problems it could be because we're fishing in open water and I know crayfish don't really like open water. Um, if you're going to be fishing the margins and you could have your work cut out. Um, they are showing in the margins, the carp, but personally the margins, the bottom isn't great. It's, it's choddy because of all the overhanging branches, all the leaves going in the water. It's not a really clean bottom. so. Personally, I wouldn't probably fish in the margins. Um, you know, I was using spinner rigs and I was still winding in bits of debris. Um, I was I had rotting leaves on my hooks when I was winding in, so personally I'd avoid the, like that dam wall that's over the other side. Um, I have caught from there in previous, previous times that I've been here, but open water, nice clean bottom, and the feed in there. So on this trip, that's that's what we're doing.
So I thought I'd just mention a little bit about Forest Lake itself and what options you've got if you're thinking of coming here and maybe why you might want to come here. So I've been here, this is my third time now, and first time it was by pure fluke. I was talking to a tackle shop owner about four years ago now. We were talking about France and how he goes every year. And I said, I've never been. I said, but I said, I don't think it's for me really. So we got talking and he said, why? And I said, I'm not really bothered about fishing in big groups and it just being like a piss up. It's not really for me. I like peace, peace and quiet. If anyone who's been following my channel, I'll, I'll do a lot of fishing on my own. Um, and he recommended Forest Lake. He said it's a nice small lake, um, quite intimate, maximum of, maximum of three or four anglers. And I said, oh yeah, that sounds good. So at the time I was on Facebook and I found the page, so I started following it. And then just a few weeks later, there was a last minute cancellation post on there for anyone who could come over. It was like the 7th of August or something, 2019. I was off work at the time and my missus was off that week and I just happened to mention it to her and she was like yeah yeah we'll go so it was all a last minute thing um, but she was up for it because we were told that there was a lodge with a bed in so we decided to drive so if you're going to drive then obviously you've got the the Euro tunnel or you've got um, the ferries from a couple of different ports so we looked into it and we decided we were going to get the ferry from Poole, which is near Bournemouth. Um, so it was a Brittany ferry. It cost us quite a lot of money. I think it was about £300 for a return. So not cheap. Um, but we made a holiday of it. So we went down to Poole a couple of nights before the France trip. And we stayed in Poole in a hotel for a couple of nights. And we just went out drinking, out for meals and just done a bit of touristy stuff down there because neither of us had really been in that area before so that was good a uh, good start of the holiday so we got the ferry over which was a, a morning ferry so we had to be at the port for say 7 a.m something like that so you're on the ferry for about three hours three and a half hours um didn't particularly enjoy the journey i've done cruises before uh but ferries can be quite rocky um if the if the water's rough on the, on the day so yeah it wasn't really for me there was smells of sick all over the ferry you could hear people throwing up in the toilets and I was like oh nah so I'd get the tunnel if I was to drive so we ended up coming out of the other side into Cherbourg so by then it was probably about one in the afternoon two in the afternoon so I decided I was going to drive roughly halfway here to Forest Lake um, which is four to four and a half hour drive and we stopped near the town of Tours <coughs> excuse me <coughs> yeah we stopped near the town of Tours overnight uh, which which it was it was worthwhile doing so we stayed over there and then the next morning we set off for the lake which was about another four four hour drive so you're talking a good eight to nine hours to get here if you're going to do it in a one so yeah we drove here no problems at all some quite nice roads very scenic and that was us so fishing wise um terry and danielle the current owners they hadn't owned this for that long they'd owned it for about six weeks i think at the time and i don't think the lake had been too busy um previous to that um unfortunately the previous owner passed away so the booking calendar wasn't full and I don't think the fish were were getting much food going in to them so let's just say they were quite hungry that week I was here so I was only fishing five or six hours a day and um, I think I caught 36 carp by the end of that week and a lot of them were 20s and I had quite a lot of 30s but the biggest was 36 on that week um, but it was a fantastic week. It was an ideal start for me, you know, to to come to France. It was it was ideal. We went self-catering on that that trip, 
and um, I brought all my fishing gear, brought my bait and uh, obviously we had transport so I just paid for the lake um, and then I came back March 2020 which was just when Covid was kicking off it was it was dodgy whether or not I was even going to be able to arrive um, but I managed to, I had the lake to myself it was cold, I'm not going to lie night time, frosty, you know it was 2 degrees fishing was tough um, but I enjoyed it, I had 4 fish that week but the good thing about it was two of the fish were quite special I had a 78 pound catfish which was my first big catfish in my life and I had Zorro which is one of the biggest fish in this lake and that came out at 38 and a half that fish now does mid 50 at certain times of the year so it's really piled away on since then so I had a good week so that week I flew so I flew from London to Bergerac which is the local airport I got picked up by Terry so I paid for the airport transfers I paid for food package here um, and I paid to hire fishing gear so all I needed to bring was reels bite alarms bobbins um, and basically just the gear to set up your rods so just your terminal tackle leg clips rigs, leads and any other bits and pieces but didn't have to bring much fishing gear which is what you want when you're flying so that was great um, food is very good here cannot fault it and um, I decided to ask my dad to see if he wanted to come for a trip he was well up for it but he wanted to come in the summer when it was warm so this was originally planned for June 2020 Obviously because of the pandemic it kept on getting rescheduled but Terry and Danielle were very good. Um, they just kept on rescheduling and was giving us new dates, they were fantastic. So thank you to Terry and Danielle for working with us for that. Um, so here we are now, July 2022 and this time we flew. We flew from Leeds Bradford with Jet 2 into Bergerac, absolutely brilliant just over an hour's drive from me from, from Teesside and uh, couldn't fault Jet 2, absolutely fantastic so, <clears throat> so that was good we've got the food package which has been excellent once again and we've got the tackle hire so brilliant we've um, done something a bit different to what most people would do we've actually got a rental car for this week uh, I booked it quite fine in advance so I only paid just over 100, 100 euro for it so that's great for us, it gives us a break able to get out for a couple of hours and uh, just breaks up the fishing a little bit because fishing can get a bit tiresome when you're doing it for a full week and uh, I think we're doing it right um, I'm certainly enjoying it So, and I like to think my dad is but he's a bit camera shy so doesn't want to be part of it <laughs> um, but yeah no it's going well and so yeah so that's that um, so yeah if you're thinking of coming over they're your options so you've got a few different options of transport you can do different things when you're here get a higher car if you want to it just gives you that bit of flexibility you can do your own uh, runs to the shop and uh, not just be relying on on the owners but um, it's whatever you want to do. If you just want it to fish solid for the week, then you don't need a high car. Just come and fish solid for a week. So you have a lodge which comes with this lake. And if you've got the lake exclusive, then that lodge is for you. Obviously, if you've only booked a swim and you're sharing the lake with other people, then I don't know how that would work. Um, but if you've got the lake exclusive, then like we have this week, then whoever wants to use the lodge for sleeping in they can do so there's a double bed in there now when I first arrived in the August um, I slept in there with my wife and it was one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in and we both said that absolutely great um, my dad's using that bed on this holiday and uh, I'm just roughing it at the lake and 
yeah, you can't fault it. I'm quite comfortable. Bivvies are nice and spacious, and uh, bed chairs, sleeping bags. It's all, it's all good stuff. So, yeah, um, it's all here for you. Uh, where else are we? So in the lodge itself, it's got fridge, freezer, uh, sink. It's got a cooker if you need it, and it's got TV. It's got DVDs, double bed, flushing toilet, working shower, nice sink. It's everything you. It's everything you really need, especially if you just here for a fishing holiday. So, yeah. That's where we're at really. Um, so I'd recommend this lake to anyone who wants to get runs under the belt. Um, I think you'd have a hard time blanking here. I think the guys who do struggle um, tend to not change their tactics when, when it's getting tough. So I think the guys who do blank, maybe they stick to the dam wall all week and they're stubborn. They don't want to move the rigs. They say they put bait over there, so they're going to leave them there. But I don't recommend that. I think this is a type of lake where if you're struggling and you've not had a fish in a day, you need to start casting somewhere else and just try and find the fish, locate them. They show all over the lake, but they don't necessarily feed all over the lake. So they've been shown quite a lot over in the shallow area, which is towards the other side of the lake um, near the island. Um, it's a small island, but it's not in the lake itself. It's it's after the the um, swims where the bivvies are. There's like a an an unused swim, which has actually got an old bivvy still set up on it. Um, <clears throat> it's very shallow around there. It's two two foot, two and a half foot, and they do show quite frequently. But whenever I've cast over there, over the three trips I've been here, I've never managed to ca catch one. So I think they go over there to chill a bit, but I don't think they, they necessarily feed over there. I might be wrong. Someone might prove me wrong. But um, certainly out in the open water, roughly halfway out to three quarters out, it's about six foot. So um, it's, it's a good place to start and see how we get on. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much covered everything I can think of at this moment in time. And uh, if I can think of anything else, I'll add it in a later video.
So as you're aware, we're taking turns with the rods when we get a bite. So it was my dad's turn, and uh, yeah, he's only gone and caught a 50 pounder. So we're gonna get it out of the water. Just He's gonna support it in the cradle, have a few pictures, then we're gonna get back in the water. I will then try and do a few photos, but if we can't, we can't. But yeah, we're gonna uh, get it out and it weighs 51 pound eight. So, great capture. There we go, 51 pound eight. Well done. That's a brilliant fish. I'll just move the camera a little bit closer. There we go, get me out of the shadow. Oops. <laughs> That's a beast. Right, we'll get it back in the water. Right, so I've already mentioned We've been taking it in turns of rods. I did not catch this one, my dad caught this one. But it's very difficult to pick up, so I'm gonna just pick it up, just for the camera. And I did land it, so surely I'm allowed to pick it up, so. £51.8 <coughs> This is a known fish to the lake known as Zorro £51.8 So just a quick video showing the rigs that we're currently using. They're just simple spinner rigs or Ronnie rigs, whatever you like to prefer to call them. But now we're using bottom bait boilie with just a bit of artificial corn tipped. And these are on size 4 hooks. And that's what we just caught with Zorro on and most of the others. So they're working. So for bait, uh, Terry the owner, he can uh, supply Nutribaits. So we've been using these two flavours. Trigger pineapple and big fish mix. And we've just been mixing them together. We've been using some house pellet. Just really simple. And that's what we've been using this week. We've not been putting loads out, we've just been putting a um, couple of scoops worth over each rig and that's been doing the job for us this week so we've just been using them out of the bag on the rig um, we've been catching on both both flavours so yeah highly recommend it, it's been working well good morning so it's Friday morning, our last full day just after 7am. Hopefully my dad will be down shortly and we'll get these rigs boated out. So I'm not too concerned that we haven't got the rods in the water for this time of morning. We actually haven't had a fish before 9am so a bit of a strange bite time but between 9am and 12 that's when we're getting our first bites of the day. Then it tends to go quiet for a couple of hours and then roughly from 3pm till 7 p.m. seems to be bite time again and then it goes quiet so a bit unusual bite times um, I've done three nights fishing during the night and they were really quiet so yeah 9 or 12 3 or 7 seems to be when we're getting the bites this week here in July but I'm sure it'll all change um, throughout the year so that's the plan, hopefully we're going to get a few more fish on the bank today but we're on 11 fish for the week so 
we cannot complain, we're really happy with that. And we've had some obviously some really good fish. 51 and a half pound mirror yesterday. Yeah, really pleased with my dad for that. You know, we could only have dreamt of that, you know. So yeah, it's been an amazing week so far. Get a few more on the bank today. And um what we'll do tonight is once the evening meal's been brought down, um we'll then pack up at about 7 a.m. Uh, 7 p.m. sorry. And uh Pack the rods away and we'll go up, get showered and then have a drink outside the lodge for our final night and we'll call that the trip. So hopefully I'll see you shortly with another fish. Just a quick update, so we've just came back from Ribrack, went for a nice coffee, it's good to get out for a couple of hours, so we just came back, I've just boiled the rigs out, out in open water, and I've gone quite light with the bait, I've only put four or five boilies over each rig, hoping that that'll get us some quicker bites tonight. So yeah, here's hoping we'll get a couple on the bank before we pack up later tonight to end this uh, this brilliant week we've had here at Forest Lake. So I'll update you as and when we get anything. Right, we finally got one on the Friday. 24 pound mirror, well done. So just a quick update, it's uh, Time is it now? About half past five. We've had one fish, which was a 24 pound mirror, so it's quite tough going today. Not too sure why, but it's what it is. Um, they're not showing, so we're not sure what's going on. Um, but we'll just uh, sit on our hands and give it a couple more hours until we decide to call it a day. So hopefully, we'll get. Maybe one more on the bank for myself. If not, is what it is. So, that's us. We're finished. Just wound all the rods in. It's about half eight now. 
there's some really dark clouds so it looks like it might rain but uh, yeah unfortunately I didn't get a fish for myself today but never mind so we've had a really good week here at Forest Lakes and uh, yeah we've had some memorable captures mainly for my for my dad and um, no it's been really good and uh, if you've enjoyed this video please give it a like feel free to subscribe and follow me for any future fishing and uh, just a big thank you to Terry and Danielle here at Forest Lakes